Well, it's actually Robert Downey Jr. that she's not interested in. You want to shut the door? Just come in here, sir. Yeah, it's pretty noisy down here. At least I'm here. I really appreciate you coming. And what is your name? Corwin. Corwin Sorley. Sorley. Yes. All the black sword and sword. Yeah, it's just a part of how you are. And what do you say?
create these benefits. However, they're not our initial goal. They just are the, the um, things that come out of the riding. So as you can see in this video, this little girl, we've actually seated her backwards on the horse. It gives her more of uh, a wide base to sit on. And she's, all, she's working right now by reaching up and grabbing reins. And then just after this, the instructor tells her, well, you don't have to use your left arm anymore, you have to use your right arm. So she obviously has some sort of muscle or spasticity. Um, and making her really reach for those reins is just stimulating all of those, those motor controls, those fine and gross motor controls. It's postural balance. Using your core is so important when you ride and you could really work on that. Um, coordination, endurance, because you're riding. Riding is definitely a lot harder than people think. You don't just sit there. So you have to use all the muscles in your body when you ride. Uh, and then also you could be doing obstacle forces, which helps with your visual orientations or spatial orientation. Um, so the, the way, the best part about the physical benefits is when you ride a horse, you're using the muscles that possibly someone in wheelchair bound wouldn't normally use. And they also, because horses have three planes of movement, they have the forward backward movement, the side to side movement, and the rotational movement, that person is getting the same feeling as if they're walking. So if they are using crutches or they have MS, like you saw in the video of David, he cannot walk as we would. But with the horses, it really, really helps them. So for the educational benefits, just from eight pieces in an arena, you can get an unlimited number of possibilities for your students. You could do color recognition. As they walk in the gate, after they've mounted, you could say stop at every cone and tell me, say something that's the same color. Or starts with that same letter. So blue, yellow, orange, I mean just with four cones, you can get so many different verbalizations or, or color and shape recognition, what shape is the cone. Um, and then there's also dressage letters around the outside of the arena. In some therapeutic centers, they have the whole alphabet along the side. Um, you can have them stopping and saying a word with the same letter. I mean, but really, just with a, a couple of things in your arena, you can achieve so much learning. The emotional benefits are the ones that I like to see the most. You see such a change in a person when they get around a horse. I mean, and also the horses change too. Um, my miniature horse that I had used before I'd taken to churches and she once played the um, donkey in the Christmas story. But she she's um, has a bit of an attitude, but when she gets around the kids, she just melts. She comes up right to a boy in a motorized wheelchair, puts her head in his lap, and just stays there, and ends up playing with his wheelchair, because it's fun. We thought she'd be scared of it. Um, but as you see in this video, these are adults, so it's not just for kids. A lot of people think it's just, we're just helping kids with disability. No, it's, it's everyone. You need to keep up that movement, because if someone gets older, and they're not using their muscles, they deteriorate. And you know, the adults need it too. Um, it's also very scary. <laughs> you get some of these kids that think, I can do this, and then they get up there on some of these strapped horses, and it's a long way up. And it's a very humbling experience. Um, um, I, I've taught many group lessons, and there you can have five people in a small arena at once, and that means the riders have to constantly be aware who's behind them, who's in front of them, is someone coming up beside them? What is my horse doing? Am I coming up too fast on someone? Should I circle? So there's constantly having to be decisions made. Um, each student has a goal and each lesson plan has an objective. And um, there's just an extreme amount of empowerment. Even if your uh, rider if it does have a leader or a sidewalker or two, there's still that ability when you say, turn your horse to the left, and if they pull that rein, that horse is going up. now is um, of the student awards banquet held at Fieldstone every year. Um, and this is a really great opportunity for the students to really come out of their comfort zone in front of a crowd 
They have, when they get their award, they come up, they shake hands, they look their person in the eye. Some of them have even had little speeches. Um, and then also, just when you're in the arena, you have to have an extreme amount of trust in your person leading your horse, or your horse, or your your uh, instructor, the people around you. And uh, it's not really until you give into that trust that things really start to happen. But once you see that change, these 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 people just these kids, students, riders, they just they make loops and bounds. Fieldstone this summer. I, well, I worked with their summer camps. Every week was a different theme. Um, and as you see here at the bottom, we painted horses. We had water fun stuff. We, we stained a few horses. A couple of the white horses were no longer white after some of the paint had come off. Um, Don't paint Zippy in the Yeah, I remember. <laughs> it was very hot. The top left, Nick. One of the halflingers really liked the spray fan. Um, but I I can really, I can honestly say that this summer changed my life. I, I knew I wanted to do therapy and course for the rest of my life. I, I knew, but I never knew how much 